here taking a look at the HD Zero new Freestyle uh, One Watt VTX. This is one of those products that came in while I was on vacation. Uh, I think there's to cover it as quickly as I can. I know I'm not known for making short videos. Uh, it's nothing has really changed outside of the form factor of the manufacturing. What's going on y'all? This is Mo, back from the dead, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Carnage 4-inch forest frame by Sub250G FPV. I've been having a lot of fun with this drone lately, mostly because of its insane power and its lightweight. You're going to want to stick around for this one. First, we're going to start off with some flight footage, some B-roll. We're going to get into a narrated flight, and then we're going to be at the desk to go over what I used to build this absolute monster. No pun intended. Stick around for this one.
All right, so we are moving on to the flight footage here. Something I want you to keep in mind is the throttle value on the bottom left of your screen there. That's the percentage of throttle. And I want you to keep an eye on how low it is throughout this entire flight. And that is because these motors, these T-Motor 1804s, 3400 KBs, are just absolutely insane. They're, they're, up, just, they're just nuts. Um, it's not that I don't recommend these motors because I do. I think they're a lot of fun, and they make this build a lot of fun. You just have to be aware that if we're going with this size of motor, we're going to have a lot of responsibility in keeping this thing uh, under control. Um, I could barely do it in my backyard. I think this is too small of a space really for this quad, and I am not skilled enough of a pilot to really make use of it. But, you know, if you're in an open field in, in a park or wherever you like to fly, just in a, not, a small area like this, I think they're a lot of fun. Um, other options for you, though, it would be the 1604s or even a 1404 if you want more efficiency. I think 1604 is probably the better spot for all around you know, performance and efficiency. If you want to go absolutely flat out, then I would say these 1804s are just a lot of fun. They're amazing. But yeah, it almost feels like a a sport bike with you have all that power right at your your throttle. You have it's just ready to go, ready to be unleashed, and it's kind of reassuring that you have that to bail you out of certain situations. But it can get you into trouble. That's the other thing. It's fun, but it can get you into trouble. So right now I'm flying the GMB 650, that that newer battery with the yellow um, label with the flowers on it. Uh, a great battery. I actually preferred the 550. Um, from our line, I got about maybe 15 or 20 seconds less flight time on the 550, but it was a little bit lighter, and I just like that trade-off a little bit more. Anything over three minutes, especially because I built this out to be more of a freestyle powerhouse build, I'm happy with. And because this was geared more toward freestyle, I'm using the tri-blades here. I'm a fan of bi-blades, especially on my lighter builds. I like the way they perform. I like that drifty feel. And you can use them on these motors, but I, it just didn't seem to me like they were the right fit. I would use a bi-blade on a 1404 or, or probably a 1604. You get that extra efficiency, and I just like the flight characteristics. But you can put whatever you want on there. But this was really my first experience with a 4-inch quad that I built out you know, myself to the spec that I wanted. And I was just very impressed by the performance of it. You know, I understand that some... People prefer a heavier quad, you know, a thicker base plate that they can bash around. And that's completely okay. This can take some abuse, but I wouldn't bring it to, you know, a bando to, to thrash around. But I would take this, you know, to, to a park, to a tree spot, and just absolutely fly off the rails. Look at this beautiful sunset. It's distracting me here with this beautiful race cam. Man, analog is, is so great. But yeah, that's the takeaway here for me, is that this category is has a place it is it can either be super efficient super lightweight you know on smaller motors and and you can do like a long range or you can do like a pseudo freestyle long range build or you can just put the beefiest motors you got and absolutely go all out and it was a lot of fun all right so we're gonna hop over to the bench to go over some build specifics stick around for that Alright, so here we are back at the desk. Thank you for sticking around. For those of you who made it so far, I'm assuming you want to know a little bit more information about the build, and I am here to deliver that. Um, first and foremost, the thing I want to point out is the motors. Um, as, I hope I, as I hope I conveyed and you can see, these motors are insanely powerful. Um, they're the, the T-Motor Pacer 1804 3400 KV motors, and they are absolutely insane. Um, are they overkill? Probably. I would say they're probably overkill for this build. Are they fun? Yes, they definitely are. Um, if you're looking to build this up and you want and just an insane, insane performance capability, I would recommend these motors. If not, if you're looking for something a little more tame, um, more efficient, I would probably go to the 1604. I think that's probably a better spot for this, especially if you're building it light, um, which I would recommend. These It just flies so well when that weight is down and keep in mind i'm biased i primarily fly micros so i expect a certain behavior from my drones you know that ability to turn on a dime um you know that flight feel of less inertia 
more responsiveness that comes with lighter weight. So keep that in mind. But you can, you know, you can build it however you like. It's up to you. Whatever the flight fuel you're looking for. If you want the same power, 1804 Pacers, insane. If you want more efficiency, a little more controllability, 1604. Maybe even a 1404 if you're going for hyper efficiency. Throw some bi blades on there. What's cool about this category of drone, not necessarily this this one specifically, right? The lighter 4S 4-inch builds just have it's almost a jack of all trades. You can build it out to be like a long range, super efficient platform. You can build it out to be a powerhouse, which I would consider this one to be, and everything in between. And as such, they can do anything you want them to do. So the four inch category, I hadn't really explored heavily until this quad and I feel like I had been missing out. Sorry about the jump cut there. My footage ended up getting corrupted. Not sure how that happened, but here we are again. Um, what I wanted to go over next is the frame itself. Because this is just a frame, it's not a bind and fly, you have to build it up yourself and you have a couple of different options in doing that. Starting with the um, AIO or the stack mounting is either 20 by 20 or 25 by 25. In here I have that uh, Mamba uh, F405 I believe it is stack. And up top and what's unique about this frame as well is, is it's intended for you to mount the VTX on the top plate which you can see that I've done here. The mounting for that is also 20 by 20, 25 by 25, or even 16 by 16. So you can use those um, diamond shape or those uh, triangle shaped VTXs. Um, so kind of an interesting option there. The motor mounting is either 9 by 9 or 12 by 12. Those are the two holes out on the, the edges there for the 12 by 12. There's a couple different camera mounting options as well. This is a full size analog camera, you know, 19 by 19. Um, you can use these smaller micro cameras or nano cameras, the smaller ones, I think they're 14 by 14. You'd have more room there. So if you wanted to use an HD VTX, for example, walk snail or HD zero, you can still manage to fit those cameras with the exception of the, the huge V2 um, walk snail cameras in the pro camera. And the 4-inch frame also supports toilet tanking, the battery, which is what I did here. This is actually my first toilet tank larger quad, and I think it flies really well. Um, you know, I think it, there's differences in flight characteristics between a top-mounted and, and a bottom-mounted quad. Um, there's more, there's less pull or less inertia when you have a top-mounted quad, it feels like to me. I mean, I'm not super in tune with that. I don't race. It doesn't really matter too much to me, but I can't feel a difference. And I actually really prefer the toilet tank if not only for the fact that it gets the straps out of the way. It just seems to be in a better spot this way. Um, so another cool option of this. And you know, that's really it as far as the specifics of the frame. It, at the end of the day, it is just a frame, but it's how it is designed and how it is intended to be built up is what's important. And this all is all about the lightweight. Now, I showed it earlier, but we're going to take a look at it again. This is dry, and, and again, I'm not the best builder. You can, you can make this a lot lighter as well, but this is coming in at 148. This is probably my preferred battery, the 550. We get 330 with somewhat aggressive flying, um, 3 minutes and 30 seconds, and it comes to 207. I've been flying it with the Runcam Thumb Pro, and um, it doesn't add much weight at all. Let me see if I can grab that. So yeah, with the Runcam Thumb Pro, you can't really see it. I'm sorry, the light's blocking it. 224 grams, um, still well below the 250 limit. Without the thumb, 207, and dry, 148. So if you are going to build one of these, I would recommend you try to keep weight in mind. That is using lighter components where you can, maybe using a little less of a beefy motor, but really anything that you can fit in here is going to make it light. You can't really t put much to make it heavy like a HD VTX with, you know, the heat shields that aren't going to fit. But, you know, there's a reward for keeping that weight down and it is a flight experience unlike any other. If you haven't experienced an ultralight, you know, build in general, that's why I like these toothpicks so much, those three-inch toothpicks that I'm always raving about. It's just a really nice feeling flight experience. It just makes sense to my brain. It just clicks. It performs like I would expect it to, and that's even though this thing has an insane amount of power, and even though it gets away from me because I'm not the best pilot, it still just feels good to fly. It makes sense to my brain, and I think that's because of the lightweight. So it's something that you should absolutely try to build up. You know, I recommend sub 250s frames, of course, but any four inch that you can build ultralight. Please give it a try. I think you'll be really surprised on how much capability it has and how good it feels to fly. So that about wraps it up here for me with the Carnage 4-inch frame. Thank you very much for watching if you made it this far. I do appreciate it. Um, if you have never flown or are interested in flying a 4-inch quad, 
I recommend it. I really do, especially if you like micros. I primarily fly micros. I've been having a hard time not flying this over the past couple weeks that I had it. It's just a lot of fun. Like I said, it's like a super bike. When you have all that power at your fingertips and responsibility to know when to use it, it just becomes a lot, a lot of fun. You know, I would recommend this quad by Sub 250G FPV. It's just the frame, it's just the frame. It's not very expensive. You can compare the cost of fills at Sub 250G, fills frames to other frames. It's, it's very cost efficient. And more so, Phil is a really good dude. It's just him. He's, he builds these quads like passion projects. He works countless hours on them. That's why I don't have a problem advertising his products. I really don't. As always, I don't make anything off of this. I don't get any commission for sales. Phil himself barely makes any money off of his sales. So I'm only telling you this because I, I truly endorse this frame. If there's any problems with this frame in the future, I'll make an update video, but I truly believe that this is a quality frame. If at the very least, if not, you have to try a four inch quad. I think the four inch class in general is slept on, is overlooked a lot because it's kind of that weird in between. It's like I'm three and a half and then go straight up to a five. And no, I don't think so. I think the ultra light four inch quads have a really good place. They're super efficient. You know, we're still well below 250 and you get all the performance that I mean that I would want you know, it's each their own. You know, some people want heavier quads, some people want that inertia, which is completely fine. I would say at least give one a try if you haven't already. But all right, this video has probably gone on for long enough. Thanks again for those of you who made it to the end. I, I truly appreciate it. Let me know what I can do different, what I can do better, what I can do worse. Um, any suggestions, I'll be happy to take them. Any comments, please leave them below. I try to answer every single one. If I don't know the answer to your question, I'll tell you I don't know. So no problem there. I'm not going to give you some bad info. Thanks again, everyone. This has been Mo, and I'll catch you on the next one.